Nearly 20 people flee the scene of a rollover in Winona. Find out why. A local medical clinic is supplying 100% free medical care. Find out who next. Hi there, welcome to NAZ Today. My name is Alexa Vagnazzi and thank you for, turning, for tuning in. We have a happy ending to report. A Flagstaff woman reported missing last week has been found. Trudy Lawson has returned to her family safe and sound. On Friday, three risk takers decided to base jump off the Grand Canyon with disastrous results. The three jumped successfully the first time. Then one of the jumpers, David Stather of Calgary, Canada, decided to jump for a second time alone. Friends of Stather didn't see him jump while waiting for his landing at the bottom of the canyon. On Saturday, Coconino County Search and Rescue officers located Stather's body 2,000 feet from the rim. Coconino County Detective Pat Barr says his body has been recovered. They were able to recover his body and meet with the investigator from the medical examiner's office at the top of the rim. And he was transferred to the medical examiner's office here in Flagstaff. Well-known surgeon at the Alberta Health Center in Canada. On Saturday, 10 miles east of Flagstaff, a van with an estimated 20 occupants rolled over. Only a small number of the passengers remained at the scene of the accident. Two highway patrol officers gives us insights and updates on this strange event. We got dispatched a report of a one vehicle rollover on N40 eastbound at Winona. It was a van which was occupied by 15 to 20, 21 undocumented aliens. The driver and lost control of the van, reportedly brimming with occupants, most of which were not wearing seat belts. Three of the passengers remain on scene because of their injuries and told the responding officers that other occupants in the van had fled. Well, our concern isn't necessarily, you know, rounding up undocumented aliens who had fled from a traffic stop. Our concern was that one of them was injured. We have multiple ground units from, from DPS and the Coconino County Sheriff's Department out on foot driving the roads out here. We have a helicopter that is doing an air search for us. We are uh, attempting to get a search and rescue team from the Sheriff's Department to come out here to put more people on the ground to actually go on foot and look for these people. Search the area for most of the night. We wound up locating 15 uh, of the occupants, including three children. All 15 passengers were taken to Flagstaff Medical Center, but only six were admitted. The three children who could not be identified have been turned over to Child Protective Services. Now what fate remains for the undocumented immigrants who are involved and have been recovered? Our policy is that we will contact ICE, the immigration, and it's up to them whether they will respond out to take custody of it or not. For NAZ Today, I'm Sierra Ferguson. The arrival of flu season has many people in Coconino County experiencing the body aches, fever, runny nose, and nausea. And AZ Today's Colleen Sikora with videographer Ryan Matterick offers practical tips to prevent the flu. Approximately 100 cases have been reported in Coconino County. However, Linus Neenstadt from the Communicable Disease Program says this number is just a snapshot of the number of actual flu cases. Yeah, e even though we can give you a number of what's been reported. That's a very small slice of what is actually out there. The bulk of flu cases that have been reported are the A-type flu virus, commonly known as the H1N1 flu strain. The majority of what has been reported to Coconino County has been uh, A from what we've seen with rapid flu testing. Uh, we've only received reports of two B types. The good news is, however, the H1N1 flu strain and other flu strains are covered in the commonly circulating vaccine, which is the first step to protecting yourself and others. We recommend vaccination, especially if you have somebody at, that is immunocompromised at home or that you're visiting. It's always good that you get the vaccine so that you don't bring it into uh, somebody that is more susceptible to the flu. If you do unfortunately get the flu, Neenstat offers a few solutions to help keep others around you safe from the flu. 
if you are coughing or sneezing, make sure you cover your cough, usually with a sli your sleeve or with a tissue. Uh, try not to cough directly in your hands, and if you do sneeze or cough in your hands, make sure to wash your hands. Even though the flu is so widespread, it is not too late to take preventative measures to help protect yourself and others. Flagstaff has a reputation as a town that helps each other. One husband and wife duo banded together with the community to go above and beyond. The Poor Medical Clinic, run by Dr. Henry Poor and his wife, Nurse Nina Poor, is a completely free medical clinic for those people who cannot afford conventional doctor visits. NAZ Today's Mason Agnew went to speak to the Poors to see how they impact their community. Dr. Poor reminds me of uh, the doctor I saw when I was a child. and. Um, this has a great rapport, a bedside manner that I haven't felt since I was a child. I've always had the idea that there was a place or a clinic to see uninsured people below the poverty level. Poor people aren't just poor people. They're people, wonderful people, who are in poor circumstances. I saw a lot of people. Since we opened, we've had roughly between four and five thousand patient visits here. Uh, every person who works here is a volunteer. The clerks, the doctors, the nurses, the nurse practitioners, everyone is an unpaid volunteer. We've had not just the social work community, but we've had plumbers, carpenters, heating, um, and air conditioning folks, just all those people. And we have figured at one time we had 80 employees. Those don't work day to day in the clinic, but they're people in the community have helped us. Uh, we don't know exactly what uh, the new Affordable Health Care Act will do to us. We would love for it to put us completely out of business if everyone had insurance, but that's not going to happen. It's going to be a good while before there's not a group of people that need medical care. It's just an, an unknown, but we plan to be here a while, and we'll see what happens. If you'd like to donate to the clinic so they can continue their mission, visit naztoday.com for a link to their website. Stick around. An NAU student is not only musically talented, but has a whole, but has a whole other skill set as well. And the United, Station, United Nations remembers the six million victims of the Holocaust. Stay tuned. All kinds of TV services. The phone company wasn't cutting it, so I cut down. Spotty satellite? Nah, that dish wasn't appetizing. But the all new Sudden Link? It comes with free HD and a picture so sharp, it makes real life look lame. Now I have up to 300 channel choices, earloads of digital music, 10,000 on-demand titles, and new TiVo stream that turns my tablet into a TV and lets my DVR take road trips. I've seen the future of TV, and the future is easy. Welcome back. Balance is what makes everyone unique. And tonight we're featuring the story of a student who balances her work in biology with her emerging songwriting career. It's called Streptococcus pneumonia. Sarah Maltinsky is a multi-talented <laughs> biomedical science major at Northern Arizona University. Maltinsky spends much of her time in Paul Kimes' laboratory investigating groundbreaking research in the microbial genetics and genomics field. With her career aspirations focused on being a pediatric surgeon, you would think Maltiski's free time wouldn't involve... That's right, music. For Maltinsky, education was a top priority when choosing a college. After her freshman year, she found more than the education she was seeking. I came here for college, but um, as soon as I spent some time here, I explored the community, and it was incredibly nurturing and accepting, and even if you make little mistakes on stage or in the lab, like, it's all about practicing and... Um, sharing what you have, really. Maltinsky started playing music from a young age, but it wasn't until she explored Flagstaff's nightlife that she discovered her potential. I 
um, attended an open mic at Sundara and that sort of just opened me up to this whole community of music and I started writing more um, and sort of expanding my horizon. Science and music seem like opposite subjects, but Maltinsky believes they share similar aspects. Well, technique, I would say, is the biggest artistry of science. The results sort of show the technician's artistic ability. Discovering a breakthrough makes the usually lonely lab worth the work. Those are really awesome moments because you get to connect with your supervisor and try different things to address certain issues and it's really fun. Her career and hobby may have transparencies, but there is a certain personal level that music speaks to the soul. When people come up after shows and say that like I really touched them, it's, it's perfect. For NAZ Today, I'm Ryan Maderick. Today marks 69 years since the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau and the 1.5 million victims the camp claimed. Considering it is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, a ceremony is being held at the Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial where survivors and Israeli lawmakers will join. About 20 survivors laid wreaths in remembrance for those who passed. The drought continues and the record for zero participation is closing, is closing in. Will it last? Lee Bourne has our weather update right now. All right, a ridiculously beautiful day out there today. 55 degrees here in Flagstaff, 43 the average for this time of year. And early morning low, rather mild as well. We had some cloud cover overnight. It cleared out throughout the day. We did have some thin cirrus out there today. And obviously, uh, going into week five here with no precipitation, things are quite dry out there. Since September 11th, 7.11 inches of precip, over two inches below the average of 9.46 inches. And that 7.11 hasn't changed now in all the way you you have to go back all the way to December 21st get some precipitation so December 22nd when this latest spell of dry weather started now day 37 today when we get through it's 37th day of no precipitation here the second longest streak of no precipitation since record keeping began in Flagstaff 1898 115 years and we're only two days away from the all-time record so if we go through Thursday without any precip that will be our 40th day and we will break the longest stretch of no precipitation here in Flagstaff well for the first time in weeks. I do have some good news. It does look like this high pressure. We can actually see the end of it. We can see it breaking down. It's going to be here all week long. Here we are in Arizona. You can see some of that cloud cover from earlier today. High pressure is going to be strong and large and in charge throughout this week, but huge trough of low pressure is active as we've seen it out here in the Pacific in a few weeks. And this thing is just going to continue to bash on this high pressure and eventually break it down by the time we get into the weekend. It looks like our storm window opens up. Things are going to cool down. We're going to get some cloud cover in here. And it looks like about a week from today, we could start to see some precipitation across the southwest, including us here in Arizona. But high pressure all the way through the week. Some very strong, warm temperatures as it'll be a pretty strong grand finale for this high pressure throughout the week. So overnight for us tonight, 20 degrees. We mostly clear out there. Some thin high clouds tomorrow. A little bit cooler. We have a little bit of a northeasterly breeze with a weak storm system sliding through the Rockies. So from mid 50s today. We'll go down into right around the 50 degree mark for us in Flagstaff on Tuesday. Sunrise 729. It'll be mostly sunny out there once again. Okay, here's a look at the temperatures for our Tuesday. Sedona 64 degrees. Prescott you're at 61. Payson 60. Winslow 55. And up in the Navajo Nation Tuba City 52 degrees. So our extended forecast, as I mentioned, very warm here through the week with the exception of Tuesday, the coolest day. Then we're right back in the mid 50s. Wednesday, Thursday. High pressure does start to break down by the end of the week and into the coming weekend. So we will therefore cool temperatures down, bring in some cloud cover, but still not looking for any precipitation in this five day forecast. And for you down in Sedona, right around the 70 degree mark all week long, but by Saturday, quite a bit cooler as this thing starts to this high pressure five weeks starts to break down. First time I can say that in a while. Yikes, I know it's been rough with all of that uh, lack of rain, I guess, and snow. But thanks for that update, Lee. And thank you all at home for tuning in. We will see you here tomorrow, same place, same time. Have a good evening.